Um, but really what you want to be doing is avoiding things that are highly processed, mm -hmm. highly processed things mess with our hormones. Anything that has gums, artificial flavoring, natural flavorings, all of that stuff is made in a lab and completely fucks with our entire endocrine system. All right, you guys, I am so excited to have Whitney on Whitney and I, I mean, like we have a mutual friend. So Sarah, I told you guys about the, my gateway drug to online marketing and it was Sarah <laughs> <laughs> like years ago. That's hilarious. We we're both in Beachbody and I started following along with her stuff and then she just totally did her own thing. And I was like, oh my gosh, there's this whole other world of online marketing and online business and I can do whatever I want. I don't have to follow Beach body, I can do it. And Sarah was the person that introduced me to that. Sarah's actually the mastermind that I was a part of with Sarah was where I heard about cycle syncing in the very beginning. And then to see this like come full circle and to see how it's integrating now. And then we were just talking before I'm going to go to Costa Rica on a yoga retreat with you and Sarah, this Whitney, this next January, super excited about that. It was on my vision board. It's been on my vision board all year. Like I put it up there and I was like, I just don't know that this is going to be the year, but I'm putting the vision out there. And then Sarah sent me a text and was like, Hey, we're going to do a yoga retreat in Costa Rica. You want to come? I was like, this just feels <laughs> like not, it doesn't feel too coincidental. I feel like I'm supposed to be here regardless. <laughs> so I'm <laughs> super excited and I'm super excited that it worked out for you just to hop on so last minute today, Whitney. So thank you so much for coming on. Of course. Happy to be here. Thanks for having me. I'm yeah. so excited for Costa Rica and to connect with you that down there. <laughs> I know it's going to be so much fun. I've never been there and I've never gone to a yoga retreat and just like all the things. So it's oh, going to be yeah. awesome. Yeah, yeah. I live down there. So I'm a very good person to be your host. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Well, Whitney, why don't you share a little bit about you and what you do? Okay. So I actually also know Sarah through Beachbody. We weren't on the same team, but we ended up at a yoga retreat that was done by one of another, a different beach body coach, mm -hmm. either one of our teams. So it's kind of funny that now we are working together, doing retreats together, doing things, you know, virtually that don't have to do with network marketing, all that kind of stuff. So kind of funny how beach body really opened a lot of doors and a lot of relationships, which is awesome. I have been a yoga instructor and virtual health coach for almost a decade. I went to the Institute for Integrative Nutrition, and then I'm also just I'm just a researcher. I'm obsessed with nutrition. I've read every single medical medium book from start to finish. Kimberly Snyder is a huge influencer of mine. She does the beauty detox books. If you haven't heard of those, they're incredible. I have read everything from keto and paleo all the way to plant-based and full-on vegan. And I've also experimented with all of these different diets on my body for long lengths of time mm -hmm. to really see what works best for my body. I host a variety of different wellness groups, virtual wellness groups to help women experiment with with this as well. And I really just find that there is no one way of eating, even for yourself. I think we change over time. I'll do really well on a plant-based diet for four to six months. And then I start having no energy. I'm exhausted all the time. I'm never satisfied. I'm constantly eating just to like fill this, you know, void. I turn a little bit gray. I'm just exhausted. So I find that quality is, I'm like a qualitarian, if you will, <laughs> <laughs> is my way of eating. And it is definitely predominantly plant-based, but when I'm on my ovulation phase, get out of my way. I need a burger. Yeah. <laughs> so that's a little bit of background about me. And then coming into using your cycle, I think it's so important. I started implementing, really paying attention to this and implementing, implementing certain practices of this probably, I'm going to say five years ago, and it's really changed my life. I really find that when we honor the times where we are menstruating and we are tired and we are having cramps when we honor that time and give ourselves some rest and relaxation we can come back into our active phase like full throttle and get more mm -hmm. done than any man can get done in a whole month in like four days <laughs> yeah, yeah. So don't feel bad about giving your time that space when you need it um i'll back up a little bit and i don't know if i'm going to repeat some things that you've said but we'll just kind of go from there obviously there's four phases of our cycles starting with day one which is our menstruation cycle uh this is when we're literally magnetic to the universe. Like quite literally we could have created life. So this is when it is so good to like go into our little cocoon, you know, eat your chocolate bar and create, like, what do you want to create over that month? It's very a uh, new moon energy, same kind of things. If you do any, any moon rituals, um, what do you want to create over the next month? What, 
uh, lights you up. You are quite literally magnetic to the universe. And this is when you want to ask and create. Um, this is also when you want to take rest. I don't know about any of you guys, but day one is probably my most painful day. I'm very crampy. Mm -hmm. I'm bloated. I do not feel my best. I want to literally curl up with a hot pad and my dog and eat a chocolate bar and, you know, meditate and journal and watch movies. And honor that. And that's fabulous. And that is when you should be doing that. Because then we go into our second phase, which I call it the warrior phase, <laughs> the active phase. And everybody's different. So like, it could be like, you know, they could be like seven days each, they could be four days each, it really mm -hmm. depends. I really start feeling my active phase almost like the, the third day of my period. So mm -hmm. I only need like one or two days of really awesome rest. And then I feel like let's tackle the world, you mm -hmm. know? Um, so I call that the warrior phase. That's when you want to like do the hard things. That's when you could almost like survive. Like I have zero appetite then. I could like survive on water and air and you yep. know, cup of coffee. Like let's get shit done. <laughs> and like zero sleep. I feel like those yes. are the times where I'm like, I wake up at the crack of dawn and I can stay up really late and like just yes. hustle through. Yeah. Energize. Yeah. Only if I do give myself that rest though during yeah. my menstruation. And so, yeah, it's kind of like, I call it the warrior phase. Like I always vision myself with a cape on, like I can handle anything, like do the hard shit, like have the uncomfortable phone call do the uncomfortable meeting, like the hard shit with other people, that kind of thing. Your taxes. Fuck, I have to do my taxes. <laughs> That's I a know. Good I, I actually told my <laughs> husband, I'm like, have you heard back from our tax person? Cause like, yeah. we're supposed to be writing a check or paying sometime like ASAP. Something needs to happen by Friday. I'm pretty Something sure. So, um, yeah. yeah. So that's a good time to do that, that sort of thing. Um, so, oh, like winter is your moon and then you're coming into spring with this active phase. Like, and like, that's what we're going through right now. It's like peeking out. I don't know where you mm -hmm. are in the world, but here I'm in Utah and it's like, oh yeah, here's a flower. Oh, but it's still going to rain today. And it's like every other day is crazy. Yep. So then you go into your ovulation, which is like, as a woman, it's like the best time of the month. I call it the flirt because <laughs> it's like, hey boys, like, let me entertain you. Uh, that's when you really want to like have a date or plan a party. Or if you're in social media, that's when you want to like batch all of your video content. Mm -hmm. You know, a good time to write your content would be on your menstruation. This ovulation time is like, see me world. Like you literally glow. You look different. You feel different. You're not bloated. Your body looks like, you know, you know, you're quite literally ready to make a baby. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I call her the flirt and we'll get into like different workouts and stuff. And then I have a bunch of seeds and shit. We're going to talk about it in a second too. Yeah. Overflow or overview everything. So that is definitely my favorite time of the month. That's usually when I do crave like meat, like a man and like a burger. <laughs> A, a hunk one way or the other, right? <laughs> Give it to me. And then we have the roughest part of my cycle anyway, which some people, some people refer to it as PMS, um, that time in between ovulation and menstruation. And I call her the wild woman because it's like, <laughs> she's just, you just don't know what you're going to get. And you can feel it in you. You're like, I know I'm being a bitch, but I can't help it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So T come hold me, take me. Like, I love you. And then it's like, ew, leave me alone. I'm going to kill everybody, but please send me some chicken nuggets. I don't know. Um, and this is a really good time to kind of, so just like fall is kind of prepping for winter. This is a good time to get the shit done that doesn't necessarily require anybody else. So lots of solo mm -hmm. work, that kind of like a good opportunity to start going inward mm -hmm. and do still hard, harder projects, like, like not when you're menstruating, but just like not, you don't want to do that important phone call, right? You're going to be short with somebody. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Short fuse. So just to honor these, these times, like, first of all, honor your cravings. You know, there's a, like a huge chunk of time where I'm like, oh shoot, it's one in the afternoon. I should probably eat something. And then there's other parts of my cycle. Like when I'm ovulating where I wake up starving, yeah. I think it's really important to be so in touch with your body. And I know like intermittent fasting or intuitive eating and like all these things are thrown around a lot right now. And I think if you get really in touch with your body and really ask yourself what I need and what's going on, your body will naturally do mm -hmm. it. It'll naturally intuitively eat. It will naturally fast. Like I'll go some days where, yeah, I'm not hungry at all until one in the afternoon. Other days I wake up starving. Mm -hmm. So if I wake up starving, should I really not eat until one in the afternoon because I'm intermittent fasting. Like, no, that's the worst thing ever. The fact that we've been taught to not listen to our body signals is yes. crazy to me. The fact that we're taught to take an 800 ibuprofen and power through when we're cramping and feeling like shit is crazy to me. Like if we just honor those 
two, one, two, three days where we can just rest and take care of ourselves Mm -hmm. and not take, you know, pharmaceutical drugs to push through and do what the man does. Like our whole lives will change because when we get into our active phase, trust me, that shit will all get done and then some. Yeah. So just certain ways to support this. So support your phases is different ways of movement. Uh, And it's very similar to your mood. So when you are menstruating, like, obviously you don't want to go and take a power yoga class or do a boot camp or like some hit that time. I would say if you're feeling up to it, take a nice walk outside and get some fresh air Mm -hmm. Um, at the very most, a very gentle yoga class, but probably restore. Um, I'm going to say legs up the wall with a hot pad on my belly and like a guided meditation. Um, and when you get into the warrior phase, that's when it's like really good to try something new. Like you wanted to the biking, the rideology, and those kind of places are really popular right now. Maybe you want to try that, or you want to try a boot camp, or you want to try kickboxing or something like that. Um, definitely more active. Uh, that's also the time where you're like dealing with other people. So it's really fun to do that sort of more intense workout. Same with ovulation. That's like, you know, power classes, sculpt classes, stuff that have a lot of energy. And then as you move into your wild woman, like pay attention to how you're feeling because you're really preparing to menstruate. So sometimes you're going to have more energy. Sometimes you're going to have less. So if you want to take like a flow vinyasa class, or if you, you know, are feeling like a run, awesome. But if you're feeling like restorative yoga and a nice walk outside, then honor that, like really check Mm -hmm. in Like, are you doing it because you think you need to lose weight and, oh my God, you're on a workout plan and holy shit, like can't miss a day Mm -hmm. or, you know, like, do you actually have the energy for that? Cause if you don't, you're going to do it half-assed and then you're going to not give yourself the rest you need for when you do have the energy and the gusto to go for it. Yeah. Well, and that, it reminds me, even this morning I was talking to a one-on-one client and she was like, you know, and I, so I break the phases. They're the same phases, but I call them a little bit differently. I call it the recharge, your accelerate, your connect and your reflect phases. And so like I break Uh them out and she had said, she's like, what, she goes, I'm in my accelerate phase, but I'm not feeling that accelerate energy. I'm not feeling, I'm still feeling pretty low. And so we kind of had this conversation a little bit about like honoring that, you know, stressors and life and things happen that are going to cause maybe your body to adjust a little bit differently month to month to month, right? It's not going to be the exact same every month, but also kind of talking about this idea of like, what can we do to help support where we're at in that phase? And so I had told her like in that accelerate phase, do your accelerate phase boosting sort of things like the hit workout, like get up and take a shower first thing in the morning so that you feel primed and ready to take on the world, right? Like to get that whole energy going versus just staying in your yoga pants and messy bun all morning long and then getting to the afternoon and being like, gosh, where did that productivity, where that energy, where that momentum go? I should be in that phase. But like, kind of align. It's like I said, going back to that idea of like your body does some of it, but then also our habits add to it too. So looking at like, okay, this is what phase I'm in. How can I trust that also helps support that at the same time? And I think that's kind of what you and I were talking about too, is like looking at the foods and the seeds and the different things is like as a way to help support that natural rhythm that your body's going through. And also like really pay attention to how you're starting your day. Cause I mean, if I start my day and I go straight to my phone and start scrolling Instagram, I don't care what phase I'm in. It sucks me in. And I just have a different, I just have different productivity for the day. So really pay attention to your morning routine and how can you support yourself and your, your day, like Mm -hmm. things that you do. Like, are you sitting down and meditating and having, you know, like a ceremony around your tea or your coffee, Mm -hmm. or are you just being like, Oh, straight to my email and straight to work it really does set the tone. And even, even that, like my morning, I used to think like there was, I remember the Hal Elrod sort of phase. Like I was like all into the miracle morning. I think it was probably back in my beach body days. I'm like, this is how we do days. Like every single day is like this. You do your workout and you do these three things and you do this. Like that over time, I realized like my morning routine changes so much. Like there's times when I do feel a lot of that gusto. I get up. I don't want to spend a ton of time meditating and journaling and reflecting. I'm ready to get up and do a hard workout and get right to work. And other days, I don't even want to work out. I just do the meditation and the journaling and maybe do a little bit of stretching and take my time and how even that can change and shift throughout the month as well. Sometimes I do my morning routine in the afternoon. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. And not being like hard on yourself for it. Right. Like, I feel like we live in this society where it's like, and we, and we watch everybody's highlight reel, which like your the Instagram is like maybe 20% of somebody's actual life. Mm-hmm. And so 
seeing this like, you know, oh, well, this person does that. So I need to do that. And if it's not feeling like the morning routine should feel like delicious and fun, right? Yeah. Yeah. And not like one more thing on your to-do list. Mm-hmm. Sometimes I lay in bed and that's when I do my meditation because I just don't even want to get up yet. <laughs> yep. Yep. I can't do, I, I honestly, I'll admit I cannot do that because if I put the meditation in, I'll fall right back to sleep. And so I'm like, I actually have to get up out of bed before I start a meditation or I know I'll go right back to sleep. Cause I put them in, I put a meditation in every night when I go to bed and I was thinking, I'm like, huh, I remember like the deep breathing at the beginning, but I don't remember anything else, which means I fell asleep. So I fall asleep. I think pretty quickly when I'm in bed with a meditation. So I think in the morning it wouldn't work. Like, oh, in health, we're in health, exhale. Oh, now I'm back to bed. <laughs> I'm back asleep. I'm gone. Um, I'm back so, to sleep. So that's yeah, yeah. Yeah. So looking at that, like, what are some of those big things that you notice, like either lifestyle, body related? Like I'm huge on like energy getting trapped in the body and that we need to move the body to help release some of that energy and get that mo- body moving as well as foods and things like that, that we can help support so that we are like setting our body up for a really smooth rhythm, right? Like oftentimes I talk to women and they've got cycles that are all over the place, really wonky, really irregular, really painful, really struggling. And sometimes I found that a big majority of that is the habits and the things that we're doing to surround that. So what are some of those big ones? I know you kind of talked about movement and the changes there, but what about like, I mean, I'm a, I don't actually even change my cycle. I don't change my food based on my cycle, but I know some people do, but if there were other things that you can kind of think of to help kind of support that. Yeah. Um, so movement for me on so many levels, I teach a lot about, uh, digestion and detoxification, like daily mm-hmm. detoxification habits. So movement on every level, not just for your cycle, but just for your entire well being, is like the number one, most important thing you can do. I don't care if it's ten, a 10 minute walk around the block or 10 push ups or sit ups on the floor, like move your body every single day, especially if you don't feel like it, Yeah. even, like, even on your, even on your moon, like take a, take a little walk, do a little stretch. Like our bodies are not meant to sit here at a desk for eight hours, move your body every single day. I can't say enough about that in regards to food. And I didn't just like become this way overnight, but I am really good about like paying attention to what I need and what I'm craving and all that kind of stuff, but certain things that really help me. So I, I suffer pretty bad from PMS. There's about three days a month where I want to murder someone. (laughs) (laughs) And then, as I mentioned, the first day of my period is often quite painful. Like for a lot, a lot of times in my life, I was taking like a a ibuprofen or Advil or something just to get to work and get through the day. Mm -hmm. So some things that have really, really helped me are uh, organic raspberry leaf tea. Mm -hmm. Um, I actually recommend getting this loose if you can find it. Uh, There's I read too much, but there's some things in the actual tea bags that I'm not a huge fan of. Um, But this, if I'm in the evening time, like I would obviously prefer a glass of wine, (laughs) but if I can do this, the majority of my evenings, like to wind down, or sometimes I'll even make a big batch of it and have it iced Mm -hmm. like in the summertime. Mm -hmm. This Mm -hmm. helps a lot. I notice if I'm drinking this most days throughout the month, especially the two weeks before my period. I noticed a huge difference, not only in my PMS symptoms, but also in my cramps. Yeah. That was going to be my question for you is if you do it the whole month or if you do it just based on certain phases. Yeah. I think that it really helps if you do it the whole month, it helps more I've noticed. Um, but sometimes that's just hard. So I really focus on it two weeks leading up at least the, the week leading up, but it really helps a lot. Another thing is, and I don't, do this perfectly. I'm going to tell you how to do it perfectly, but it's just like, there's just, you have to live your life. Um, so there's something called seed cycling. Have you talked about that with them? I briefly, but it's not, I mean, it's not something that I've done. So I've like highlighted it, but I've, and I've all the same thing. Like there's so many different things that you can do to cycle your life. And the big part of it that I focus on is like time and productivity and management and like workflow. Mm -hmm. So I've, I've brought in some of these other pieces and said like, Hey, if you're interested and you want to dive deeper into some of these, this is available, but I haven't done too much. I started with just flax in my smoothie. Almost, I, I drink a smoothie six days a week, I would say. Most days, most days. Um, so I was putting this in my smoothie every single day. And I was like, yeah, I didn't even put it together for a long mm-hmm. time. And I was noticing like, wow, I have like no symptoms. Like I was getting like, normally I'd be like, have tender breasts. I'd be like, okay, my period's coming in three to five days. Mm-hmm. I do track, I do have an, a, a period tracker, which now I just like, so I'm like, oh, I bet I'm on day 14 right now. And I'll look at my yeah. track. Like, I like know my body so well because I've been doing it for so long. Um, But at the time I didn't really put anything into it. And then I ended up 
having to go on antibiotics for something completely unrelated. And I started drinking this healing broth every single morning. Mm -hmm. And it was like, I didn't want a smoothie. And so all of a sudden my symptoms started to come back really intensely. Then I looked in, I heard somebody talk about seed cycling and I was like, holy shit. I bet it was the flax I was putting in my smoothie every single morning. Yeah. So try it. And so the seed cycling, it is, let's see, it is, and I write it down because I always get it confused. I do your, too. It's like, it's like yeah, pumpkin so the, and yeah. So the flax and the pumpkin are from your menstruation to your ovulation. Yeah. Again, I, okay. I, sprink, I eat salad almost every single day. I sprinkle pumpkin seeds and sunflower seeds on my salad almost every single day. And then sesame seeds, I just kind of put on everything. It's like really, you, it's just like adds a nice little crunch and stuff. Um, but if you want to get really specific and you're one of those kind of, you know, type A people, uh, this would be for the first half of your cycle. So the flax and the pumpkin mm-hmm. and, again, and just like you'd even throw all of these into a smoothie and you'd never even know they were there. And then the second half of your cycle. So from ovulation to menstruation is the sesame seed and the sunflower. Mm-hmm. Um, and again, like, don't just, I literally sprinkle it on everything all the time. And I swear to God, it helps. I can't believe how much it helps. I notice a difference when I, when I go off my smoothie to when interesting. I and I don't like to have a smoothie all the time in the summer. I mean, yeah. In the winter, so yeah. Need to come up with like other ways to, you know, make sure I'm getting that in every day. Yeah. Another amazing food that I've noticed that really helps with hormones in general is maca powder. Mm. I'm going to give you two recipes. I'm going to give you my maca bars, my maca bar recipe. And then I have a broccoli salad I make with all of the seeds. If you want to share it with everybody. Yeah. Yeah. Um, for sure. It's make with like a date, it's like dates and some nuts and some maca powder. And it basically tastes like an, a, a, a Lara bar. If you've ever had a Lara bar, mm-hmm. these are these are amazing for hormone support, which completely helps your cycle as well. Um, but really what you want to be doing is avoiding things that are highly processed, Mm -hmm. highly processed things mess with our hormones. Anything that has gums, artificial flavoring, natural flavorings, all of that stuff is made in a lab and completely fucks with our entire endocrine system. And also like if you're not eating organic meats, that's pumped full of antibiotics, full of hormones, and that's obviously going to affect your system too. So really take a look at, you know, what's on your day-to-day menu. If you have in and out every other month or something like that, is that a big deal? No. But what are you putting into your body, you know, on a regular basis? Mm-hmm. And, um, it's really important because the shit they're putting in our food is definitely messing with our cycles. It's messing with our brain chemistry yeah. and our digestion, just all of the things. Oh my gosh. So much. So, I mean, even so like I work part-time in the NICU and there was this course that I took that was all about NICU babies and whatnot. And they were talking about going green in the NICU and how like even the IV tubing, which is like, we can't get away from using IV tubing in the NICU, right? Like we have to, but that all of the chemicals and stuff like that, that are in the IV tubing. And then you think of like, we're putting it in this like 25 week old little baby and the foundation of their brain growth and their body growth, like everything we're set, like that whole development from 25 weeks to 40 weeks, we're giving it a heavy dose of chemicals every single day. And it's so like, I've been thinking about that particularly in the NICU, but everything, like everything we do from, I mean, like you even highlighted the, the food, but then even the soil and the cleaning and the, and the antibiotics and the hand sanitizers and like everything like that. Right. And I know you and I weren't around oh. like just our body, like the stuff we're putting on our bodies. Like hundred percent. Yes. Well, so that was, I was going to say it was before you and I knew each other, but I had this massive allergic reaction, like flare. And it took me probably about eight or nine months to figure out what it was. I was like, Oh, it's the, it's my sunscreen. And I'd stop using that sunscreen and then it would still flare. And I'm like, Oh, it's my, it's my makeup and I'd stop using my makeup and it would still flare. And I'm like, Holy crap. Like, what is it? And I like literally tried eliminating everything that I could possibly eliminate to come to find out it was a couple of ingredients that are in everything. (laughs) So Uh it was like, Oh yeah, it was my sunscreen and it was my makeup and it was my soap and it was the lotion. It was like, everything was bothering me, but it came down to, I I mean, I'm allergic to every fragrance and there's like other things, but like fragrance is in absolutely everything we use. And now I'm like, well, I don't even want my kids having it anymore because those are all, you know, endocrine disruptors. You're breathing it and turning your house into this 
like toxic level of, you know, oxygen. Yes. And then the, the food counterpart to that is natural flavor. So to, in order to be called a natural flavor, it just has to start as something that was natural at one time, take like a vanilla bean, mm-hmm. take it to a lab, just like fragrance and enhance. So it's, you know, more flavorful on our tongue, smells a little bit more like a strawberry and it has like an addictive, they make it addictive. So we want more of it. And it's, I mean, it's sick what they're doing to us. Yeah. Yeah. What, what the FDA is allowing, but it is what it is. And the more we know the best, better we can know. But I always like to be like, don't freak out and throw everything in your house away. Yes. Say like, once you know better, do better. So what I do, and I also hate waste. So I'm like, okay, this has that in it. I'm going to use this up and enjoy it and then never buy it again and find something else that can take its place. That's a little more natural and healthy. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think the stress of this can really because yeah. havoc on your health as well, sometimes more than just having, you know, the Dorito or whatever. Yes. Um, so much so. Like I know when my kids were really little, when I were first born, I was like natural, holistic, like absolutely everything, cloth diapers, no nothing, like my own chickens, my own garden. Like I went full and now I've reached this point where I'm like, okay, I can't really do that in my everyday life. Like that's not sustainable. I, I, yeah, it's not sustainable. So kind of finding that happy middle ground, I think, which is what you you just alluded to is like taking what you can changing what you can and then maybe taking one thing and changing it over time which is a big thing i do in terms of working inside my program is like take here's the big picture what's one thing that you can do right now so if you were to work with somebody right now i know a lot of yours is in the health fitness nutrition sort of space what would be that one thing that you would recommend i think i know what it would be but what would it be that you would recommend them do one thing right now to help really support that cycle so it would be i'm going to give you two cuz okay. i they go hand in hand so i'm going to do like movement that obviously. was my i was like i bet she's the same movement <laughs> And then add a big nutritious smoothie to your day. Mm-hmm. So, and, it's like, and I have a million recipes that I give you to start with and like find the ones that you like and, you know, tweak them and all that kind of stuff. Um, and then another thing I do is like a huge salad or a huge bowl of veggies every single day. So yeah. I'm really into like crowding out bad habits versus yes. like just taking things away from people. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, you have a huge ass smoothie. And then if you want eggs Benedict after awesome, have a huge ass salad. And then if you want a steak and, a, and mashed potatoes after awesome, just mm-hmm. get in those vitamins and minerals first and then kind of do what you want. And eventually you're not going to want the less nutritious stuff. You're going to, cr- your body starts to crave those nutrients because we are mm-hmm. overfed and undernourished as a country, like, and, and insanely. So we're the only country that our lowest income is our largest. So yeah. So I think I gave yeah. you but. Yeah. <laughs> no, they're good though. They are so good. Like oftentimes, uh, and I know you mentioned the medical medium at the beginning, but I had done his detox or like his cleanse thing a month, two months ago. And so it was like straight fruits and vegetables. And it was amazing how you we're so conditioned to believe like we need the fats and we need all the nuts. And I think we do over time need some balance, but it was amazing how just going straight fruits and vegetables for two weeks, how much different my body felt and how that I think as just as a whole, that's like one of the food groups that most people don't turn to first, right? Like if we're hungry and snacking, like even right before I was like, I'm kind of hungry. I'm going to get an avocado toast. Like I wasn't sitting there like, Oh, let me go grab my carrots. Right. Like, and it takes time for that to, it takes time for that transition to happen and to allow that space for that transition. But then once you start doing it, you start to realize how much more energy and how much more lively. And that was the one of everything just looks better. Yes. That was one of the things I loved. Actually, I learned so much from my time in Beachbody. But one of the things I learned was like how crappy I felt for so long. And I never knew I felt crappy. Like it wasn't until I started eating more fruits and vegetables and started eating better and drinking and shakes and things like that, that I really realized like, wow, I was not feeling great for so long. And I had no idea. Yeah. It's great. Yeah. It's like, uh, some people have no idea how good they're supposed to feel, right? That's yes. like a quote or something like that. And it's so true. It's so very true. Like I have, I have my, one of my programs going on right now and they're on day four and people were free because I, I eat meat and I have meat on my meal plans later on in the program. But the first week is a, you know, completely vegan. It's all based on digestion. So mm-hmm. you know, we're on like day four and everybody was freaking out in the beginning because it's a lot of carbs. Like I have, you eat rice at night and yeah. they're, 
you know, like, you know, big smoothies and nuts and stuff in your food and apples and dates. And people think dates are like, Oh my God, so full of sugar. Can't have a date. I'm like, that's one of the best things you can have for your adrenals, but they're on day four and they're all like, I'm not hungry. Like I'm okay. Like I feel great. I feel lighter. I'm sleeping great. I'm like, trust me. (laughs) I was like, I'm not saying you can never have a a meat again. I'm just saying for these, you know, first seven days, we're going to give your entire system a little break. Yes. Yeah. So, well, that was, so when we did the medical medium, I did it. And then I was like, oh, I'm going to make my husband do it. And then I'm like, if we're making food, I'm going to make the whole family kind of do it. So like my whole family did it. And obviously my kids were eating different things at school or like snacks here and there. But I was, my husband came home one day and I was like, Hey, I made you food for tomorrow. And he's like, I couldn't even finish lunch. Like I have lunch left over from yesterday for tomorrow because it was so much food. Yes. Mm-hmm. You know, like, and you're nourishing on a cellular level. So that's the problem. It's like when you do eat something like a fast food meal, you're hungry again because your body, yes, it got calories, but it got zero nutrients. So yes. your body is still starving. Yeah. yeah. Whitney, yeah. this has been so great. I would love for everybody that's here and hopping on to be able to connect. And I'm actually kind of thinking this would be a great, like, we could release this as a podcast episode too. I think it would be helpful to get it out there and spread the word even more. But Heather, if you have questions or anything you want to throw in the chat, throw it in there. But while we wait for that, Whitney, do you want to share where people can go follow you and maybe go to Costa Rica with us? Oh, come to Costa Rica. <laughs> Quick though, there's only five spots left. Um, yeah. So yeah, I'm really mostly on Instagram. So you can follow me on Instagram at the fit wit t-h-e-f-i-t-w-h-i-t from there i've got a link in the bio that connects you to everything that you need to know costa rica and all the things yeah i appreciate so much i appreciate you kind of and it's like all the synchronicities right like of (laughs) i i randomly went for uh, yesterday i was at at the hospital and i was on my lunch break and i was like i'm just gonna go for a walk and as i was walking it's like you know i'm and i got the message that the person that was supposed to speak today couldn't speak and so i was like immediately sarah's head or thought or face or whatever whatever she is (laughs) she popped into my head and i was like oh i'm gonna just send her a quick message and she's like i can't i'm busy but my friend whitney so just to have it all work out so perfectly i know you were meant to be here and i know that the women that are going to listen now and to the replay are going to be so thankful and appreciative that you showed up today well thanks for having me it's fun to talk about this stuff i geek out on it so it's great (laughs) yes i i hear you i'm in the same boat